Okay. So, Bob, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you coming on the podcast. I'm a big fan of all of your stuff. I'm in the middle of the, I'll be honest, I'm in the middle of the go-giver influencer. Um, I'm a big audio per, audiobook person because I like to like hear your voice, you know, telling the stories because your books are, you know, written in parables. And I, I like those kind of books. There was a book I read years before called The, the Referral of a Lifetime. It's like a Ken oh, Blanchard. Yeah, yeah, right. Tim Templeton, right. Great, Great book about keeping in touch. So I was at this, um, it was some sort of a networking group, like a JBN networking group. And people are going around the room and they're saying little things about, oh, you should do this or you should check out this article. So somebody mentions this book called The Go-Giver. Huh. So I'm always looking for, so I write it like an idiot. I write everything down. So I leave the meeting, I go find your book, love your book. And now I'm like, I get through all books, three books. So a month later, we're back at this meeting and they said, well, what did you learn from the last meeting? I said, well, I just want to thank, I don't even remember his name who suggested the book, but I want to thank, you know, Mike for recommending the go-giver. So Mike comes up to me after he goes, what's the go-giver? I go, what are you talking about? You recommended the book. Oh yeah. Did I, I go, dude, it's like a, it's like recommending like, oh, I found gold in the woods and then you forgot about it. I mean, everybody there should have, so nobody heard him except me. And wow. now I'm a bit of a big advocate of, you know, getting people to, to listen you. to your book because you say some, you know, great things. And then I was listening to the podcast and everything you talk about is exactly what I'm talking about. The accidental entrepreneur, how people constantly are doing this stuff by accident. There's no plan. And as a business lawyer, I'm the guy who's coming in cleaning up the mess. Uh, you know, that's usually when they're bringing me in. I got to negotiate them out of their lease. I got to deal with their equipment leasing company, you know, whatever it is. So it's refreshing. So I appreciate taking the time and coming, joining me today. But you know, you, you've also done something else in the way I you have marketed your firm. And that is you have made it easy for yeah. people to do business with you. Right. You saw something in the marketplace, yeah. the way traditional law firms or the solo practitioners uh, or small firm, you know, however you want to say yeah. it, how they would market themselves through a very traditional way. Yeah. Which wasn't necessarily, as you saw, what the potential client right. wanted to do. Right, so exactly. That's the way to provide immense value by totally turning the process on its head and making it customer or client centric. Well, I focused. appreciate you saying that because I, I think that's one of the problems is that attorneys aren't as accessible to the average person as they as they should be. Shouldn't be this mystery about dealing with your lawyer. Oh, no, is this that. professional? Right. You know, so so let's talk about the uh, uh, about the books, about your philosophy. I know you said you have videos on your website. I've listened to some of the podcasting, um, but what's the you know? Tell me about your background, like where you're from, and then and then kind of what led up to the book and all the stuff that you do. What about your journey? Uh, well, grew up in Massachusetts, but okay. uh, got down south here to Florida as fast as I <laughs> my wife's from South Florida, so. Oh, really? Yeah, she's from Fort Lauderdale area. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm about an hour, 15 minutes north of there. I'm in Jupiter, which is a oh. northern suburb of West Palm Beach. Yeah. And nothing against Massachusetts other than the weather. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. You know, when it comes to the cold uh, weather, I just want I nothing. Even in New Jersey in February, my wife's like, now remind me, why are we here? Yeah. <laughs> like, Because I can't practice law in Florida without taking the bar. Yeah. So it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, grew up wanting to be the third baseman for the Boston Red Sox. I, I think I could have done that, except for I, I lacked one thing, and that was any semblance of talent. <laughs> right. That's the one thing in your way. Yeah. I just built one little. It's, one you know. Thing. And uh, <laughs> so I, I actually was a sportscaster. I started out as a sportscaster, and then I became a newscaster. I was, I was actually the, the late night news guy for a, a very, very small ABC affiliate in the uh, Midwestern United States. Okay. Uh, wasn't particularly good at that. And I, I, I ended up, as I like to say, graduating into sales. Okay. And, uh, yeah. The, the challenge for me was that I knew nothing about sales on a formal level. And this is you know, about 40, a little more than 40 years ago, I guess. And so I really stumbled for a few months because the, the training at the company where I was with was, you will say negligent. When I say negligent, I mean non-existent. Right. And I knew nothing other than knocking a lot of doors. What uh, kind of, what industry was it? Like, what were you well, selling? I was, I was actually selling advertising and radio uh, okay. advertising time. So it's uh, similar, staying uh, like within the industry and you went into sales. Basically what happened. Exactly. Yeah, got it. Okay. Um, and I saw, so I really stumbled for a while. Fortunately, in a, in a uh, bookstore, I uh, saw a couple of books on sales, which doesn't sound like a big deal today, 
But back then, that was a very big deal. Who, yeah. who knew those existed? I mean, only a very small, you know what I'm saying? And, right. And I knew nothing of it. So I was very encouraged. Uh, there was a book by Zig Ziglar, a book sure. by Tim Hopkins. Yep, all the good guys, Brian Tracy, oh, all those yeah. guys. Yeah, they're great. And, um, and so I, I got it and I studied it and I would come home every night after work and until about one in the morning, I was yeah. reading, and rereading and taking notes and highlighting and dog earing and sticky notes and everything and practicing and doing all. Well, within a few weeks, my sales began to go through the roof. Yeah, the stuff really works. Yeah, and, and what <laughs> happened was it went from in, in Jim Rohn. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, Jim Rohn, good to great. Uh, no, no, that yeah, good to great. Uh, well, Jim Collins, I think was. Oh, the Jim book Collins, good to great. great. But Jim Rohn, I've read his stuff too. <laughs> yeah, I, Jim Rohn was just he was wonderful. And, yeah, and, um, a great business philosopher, right? Who was also very successful in, in yeah. business. Yeah, and uh, he used to say he would have said, "I had the motivation, I didn't have the information." Yeah, that's a good I point, got right? The information. Now yeah. I had because both. both are important. Right. Uh, I would also say you can have the information, but not the motivation. You're not going to go very far either. That's but, true. But it, it's an and. It's not an either or. So, right. I agree with uh, you. So, uh, And I used to I, do the I, same thing, but I didn't read. So I would drive around in my car because I was with insurance companies in those days doing sales too with these tape. Remember cassette tapes? So cassette they had car. those booklets with all the tapes in them and you'd pop I'm them in and out while you're driving. Oh, I absolutely remember those. Yeah. Uh, you used to call them cassette tape albums. Yeah, <laughs> right, Al. Right, cassette tape and, albums, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'd listen to them over and over and over oh, again. Sure, sure, yeah. absolutely. David Sandler, all the different stuff. Oh, the the legends. Sure. Yeah, and um, and and it was encouraging to me because I saw if you had a, a methodology, well, you could pretty much accomplish what you wanted to accomplish. Yeah, and um, you know, to this day, I would personally define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. That makes sense. In predictability. Sure. Right? You know, if it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired results of B, you know right. that all you need to do is A and continue to do A, right. and eventually you'll get the desired results of B. And that was very encouraging to me because I realized I didn't have to reinvent a wheel. It right, was it was just persistence. Exactly. Yeah, right. And uh, so at that point, I began to really also understand that a big part of selling was personal development. So Very I started so. getting all the books and tapes yeah. right. uh, on, uh, you know, uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence yeah, People. Yeah, all the good stuff. Oh, yeah. Hills, Nightingale uh, Conan stuff, all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, I, I lived off that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, uh, somebody told me very early on when I was in sales, and I guess I'm still in sales. I mean, I'm a solo lawyer, whatever, yeah, um, yes, is to on. turn your car into a university on wheels. Exactly. Because if you're driving, we didn't even have cell phones in those days. You're not on the phone. But listen sure. to stuff. Uh -huh. Now it's all podcasting I listen to, but it's the yeah, same thing. Exactly. Sure, same thing. You're, you're going to take that time that would otherwise be kind of wasted time. Not that you can't, when you're driving, be thinking good things that will help you to in planning your day and so forth. Right. And so on. But you can only do that to a certain point. Really. Right, you got to fill your head with other people. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and that, Bob, how long ago was this? But when when are we talking time frame? Uh, early to uh, mid mid eighties, I guess. Okay. Mid eighties, yeah. We, okay. Yeah, I think eighty four is when I began selling. And okay. Then, yeah, and so eventually I worked my way up to sales manager of a, another company, and um, uh, from there started kind of sharing with others what was working for me. Right. And you know, before long, I started realizing that. I could make a business out of this yeah. and I really enjoyed it. So, yeah. you know, you mean the training like, and the teaching and all that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah. The speaking and, sure. and being able to do that. And so, uh, you know, so after I started, I actually began speaking by selling someone else's cassette tape albums. I had okay. gone to a seminar and I bought his, his album. Okay. <laughs> and at the end of it, there was a, an ad in the back that said, if you want to make extra money, selling these tapes, uh, call us and, you know, ask us how. And so I, right. I actually, I drove down there and you were yeah. like his rep basically. Yeah. And what yeah. he did was he taught me how to speak uh, for free at every civic club group organization, basically anyone, anywhere that would have me speak. And I do 25 minutes. And then at the end I do the thing for the, the cassette tapes. And I, I think that they had said I was the highest producing salesperson in the country, but it might've been because I was just doing it all the time. Right. And well, then, uh, you probably had a lot to say that people could resonate <laughs> with, you know? Right. And, uh, 
and then eventually I kind of broke off on my own, doing my own topic that was, uh, you know, that was uh, in line with what I wanted to be doing. So, so what, were, what was your message in those days? What were you talking about? Well, it was actually a, um, my early message was a memory training program. Oh, sure. Yeah, I did that for, for a few years. And, uh, but from there really then kind of segued into the networking, referral gathering, relationship building type of thing, which was really my wheelhouse. You know, the, the memory part was a, a skill set that I learned and it was got very it. helpful, uh, but that wasn't what I really wanted to be doing. And it probably got you in the door because it's an interesting topic. People are like, oh, I want to improve my memory, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so then, all right. So take me up through when you started developing your, all of your, I really philosophy. I mean, that's really what go giver is. It's, it's really a philosophy of how you approach things and deal with people. Right. I mean, you know, I think I'm taking the wrong thing. From yeah, no, you're, you're right. And I think there were two big aspects of that. One was just growing up with the parents I grew up with who were people who were always, you know, just bringing immense value to other people. And, and okay. So fortunate, very, very blessed. So what'd they do? What'd your parents do? Well, my dad had founded a, um, and it's 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 very different from what most most businesses were. He really was a, a forerunner in this, and this is I think back in the fifties, okay, his early fifties. It was a sort of a I, the the best way I can describe it is a psychodynamically oriented gymnasium school for kids. Wow, where he would yeah he was sort of the first person who really came along and said if you can help someone feel comfortable with themselves. Uh, athletically, physically, through sports and self-defense right. and so forth, you can help them build confidence in other areas of their life, as opposed to the opposite, where, you know, working just within the the, the, the mind outward, right. said. And so what he would do is he'd have actually the young students, uh, and, you know, back then it was with their dad, you know, that right. eventually it grew to be with dad and mom. Right. You know, okay. You know, and girls, but back in the 50s, you know, that was- It was uh, boys, good. right. Yeah. And so he teach boxing, he teach wrestling, karate, he teach how to, you know, how to hit a ball, how to, you know, catch and throw and how to do those things. And he, I mean, people considered him a miracle worker. I mean, he just took people with, and he'd also work within the families with their communication skills. And here's a guy who grew up very, very poor and, you know, the kind of the Americana immigrant slums of the depression type of thing. Right. And, you know, joined World War II, did that. And he, and he just had a natural way with people. I mean, I've yeah. never seen someone who just not had that kind of gift yeah uh, um, so it was almost like a multidisciplinary academy that people yeah, go and physical and mental the academy of physical and social development oh perfect yeah okay uh, he actually got written up in time magazine uh oh, okay. story back in the early 70s and here's a guy who never went to college you know right. just wanted, but he had he had psychologists and psychiatrists who'd recommend families to him and uh, and people getting their you know their mba or their you know doctor would come in an intern at the academy, so it was really, wow. a, yeah, it was really a very special, special thing. And mom really ran the business end of it. Okay, and, um, and you grew up around that. I grew up, yeah, I grew yeah. up around. It. So that yeah. was that was that was part. The other thing that really had an effect on me, and this is after I was in sales for a couple of years. Okay, and and I was doing fairly well, um, but never really reaching my potential. And I went to work for a uh, a, a company selling a, a rather high ticket item. Okay. And, um, and I was, I started out okay. And then I went into a, a deep slump. Okay. And it was very frustrating. Okay. Uh, and I remember coming back to the office one day after a, 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 a failed selling appointment. Right. And I must've had a really disgusted look on my face, disgusted at myself. And yeah, you were frustrated. Very frustrated. Now, what was the item that you were selling though? You said it was a big it was ticket. A, it was a car. Was it a building? Yeah was a solar energy hot water heater that I sold to homes, to homeowners. Okay, but yeah, I'm sure not like it wasn't 10 bucks to put the thing in your house. So it's right. a big, yeah, right. Um, and so this, this older guy who worked at the company, and he wasn't even in sales. Uh, I think he was in the engineering department or something, and I didn't okay. know him very well. I, I hadn't, you know, we hadn't spoken a whole lot, but he was one of these guys who kind of, he didn't say much, but whenever he did say something, it was usually profound, right? Okay. <laughs> and, and he said to me, uh, I, th I think he saw me sort of as Joe in The Go-Giver, right? That young, ambitious, aggressive, up-and-coming 
you know, sales guy who just, you know, had great potential, but whose focus wasn't in the right place. Right. And, uh, so he said, Ken Berg, he was a, a last name kind of guy. He said, right. Berg, can I give you some advice? And I said, yeah, please do. Right. <laughs> I need it. You're more <laughs> yeah. than open. Right. Yeah, really. really. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, if you want to make a lot of money in, in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. Right. Your target, he said, is serving others. Now, oh, when you right. hit the target, you'll get a reward. And that right. reward will come in the form of money. And you can do with that money whatever you choose. But never forget, the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. It ain't the target itself. The right. Target A lot of people miss that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's when it really hit me that great salesmanship was not about the salesperson, right? Uh, great salesmanship is not even about your product or your, your service, as important as those, those are. Right. Great salesmanship is about the other person. Right. It's how you can touch the life of that person with the benefits of your product and service and, and whatever else you personally bring to the table. Right. And I think when we understand that, now we're nine steps ahead of the game in a 10-step game. Yeah. And of course, this is the focus of the, the basic premise of the go-giver, that shifting your, your focus, again, it goes back to focus, from getting to giving. And when we yeah. say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. Understand right. that not only is it a more pleasant way of conducting business, yes. it's actually the most financially profitable way as well. But not for some, you know, woo-woo, way out there kind of feel-goody reason. It actually makes logical sense. Right. When you're that person who can take your focus off of yourself and place it on the other person, looking out for their Right. Yes. Yeah. Helping solve their problems, bringing value to the Well, people feel good about you. People well, that's the thing. I think when I first read your book, I tell everybody the basic premise is you should be on the long end of the giving stick, not the short end. <laughs> and if everybody point. was fighting, instead of trying to get, if everybody was fighting to give more and I was giving you more and you're giving me more, could you imagine the abundance that we would have in society sure. if that's the yeah. way everyone operated? Well, and what happens is as you're doing this, and not that everybody you're dealing with will be that way, and that's okay, because right, as right. long as you're that way, you're going to, to thrive. Right. But what you will do is you will begin attracting other people like this. And right. then you've got, as, as Pindar, the main mentor, told Joe in the book, it's not a matter of 50-50, it's right. simply 100. Yeah. With both people so focused on bringing immense value to others and, and as long as you allow yourself to receive, which is law number five, well, you've got this constant. Yeah, you can't just keep giving. Receiving. Oh, absolutely. You breathe right. out and you also have to breathe in. Right. You just uh, you don't focus on it that way. Right. Exactly. You focus on the giving. This is also why we say that money is simply an echo of value. Right. Right. You see, you see that constantly. The people that are really successful. I mean, all those guys, Zig Ziglar and Tom Hopkins and Brian Tracy, they could sell anything because it's not about – what they're selling. I mean, maybe they got to have some product knowledge, but for the most part, if whatever industry they were in shut down, they could go and sure. sell other things. Yeah. That's the what good sales people do. The baseline. I mean, obviously you've got to know, you know, your, your product, but that's the baseline. Pretty much everyone's going to know their product. That doesn't mean they're going to be a good salesperson. <laughs> that's for sure. That's why a lot of people are not like sales. Entry fee. You've got to know your product or service. Yeah. But uh, after that, it's, it's about building the relationships and communicating value as that other person understands value. Because value, different from price, of course, which is finite. It's a dollar figure. Value is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, right. idea that brings so much worth to another human being and it depends that, on who that person is and their position exactly. right in their situation and all that type of stuff value is always in the eyes of the beholder which is why selling can really be defined as the uh discovering what the other person wants needs or desires and helping them to get it right because whatever you have might not be valuable to that person it's right. not valuable to everybody That's right. so um, I wanted to get into, I, I mean, I want to get into the things about doing things with purpose, like you, like you say, and having a track to run on, but how did you, where, where'd you come about? The, the Go-Giver was the first book you wrote? 
Uh, no, back in the '90s, I wrote a book called "Endless Referrals." Okay. Uh, the subtitle I think was. I remember that one. Yeah. Sales. Yeah, it it went through a couple um, uh, editions. So the second edition came out in '99, I think, and then the the last one in 2000. Still available? You can get it on Amazon or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I just don't make tell people make sure to get the one with the the starburst on the upper right hand side because that's the third edition it's the most up to date and even that's not up to date because it was 2005 when it first came out so okay. while the are, are obviously still the same the uh you know that was before social media right really came around so as that's not written as a parable though as a story right no no none of my books before i teamed up with john on the go-giver series uh and three of those four books are parables uh i had never written a parable uh I, that's out of my strength zone. I'm a how-to guy. I'm step one. I'm I see. So it was really the it was really John that led you along this path of let's do it this way. Uh, well, John. Well, I knew I wanted to to turn the basic philosophy of endless referrals into a parable. Yeah. On I because it's relatable. People can read that. They absorb it. They oh, digest it. It's, it's really connect on a hard yeah. Level. And I remember thinking that there's one person and only one person I want to have write this with me who would be the lead writer and the storyteller. And that was John. Cause I, I, he was the editor in chief of a magazine I used to write for. And, uh, John, uh, was brilliant. He is brilliant. Right. Very few people at the time knew that now he's the golden boy sort of for, uh, for, um, uh, editor, uh, um, publishers and agents who maybe have a, you know, a celebrity or someone who they want to have, you know, write the book. John's right. the, either the ghost writer or the co-author now all over the place. But back then, few people outside of a specific niche under, you know, knew John. Well, fortunately, I was one of them who did. Right. And so he was the only one I asked. And when I say asked, I mean pleaded <laughs> with yeah. him to, uh, to co-author it with me. So yeah, he, he's, he's the lead writer. He, he made the, the stories sing. Right. And all the names everyone's made up? Uh, yeah, they're all made up. Is but there a Pindar? Is there a real Pindar? Yeah, we, we based Pindar loosely on a guy uh, named Bob Proctor. Okay. And Bob is uh, one of the world's, you know, authorities on prosperity and, and personal development. Uh, he actually was one of, as he calls it, um, uh, Earl Nightingale's lieutenants back in the early oh, days of okay. uh, Nightingale Conan. And, and, and we modeled Pindar, you know, Bob is, he's tall with gray hair and he has this deep, you know, kind of gravelly voice and, and he's really just a great guy and he's very kind and helpful. So we, we modeled Pindar. We said we based it loosely on Bob Proctor. There's a lot of Bob Proctor in, in Pindar. Um, other people were sort of, how would you say, amalgams? Is that the right word? You yeah, know, I guess. Combinations. Compilations of compilations is different, word, yeah, yeah. amalgams might be the right word. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then, of course, Joe was all of us because we've all been Joe or Josephine at, at one point in our life. And, you know, we were that person who was. Yeah. Up and Especially coming. if you're in sales. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If people are frightened about it. But I thought it was very, you know, it really it made like I read the book. I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been trying to say or that's what I've been thinking. You know, it, I think it resonates with a lot of people. And when somebody connected me with you, I said, Bob Berg, you mean the go giver? I got to talk to him. We got to get him on the podcast. And then I had just gotten something recently about the go giver influencer, and I had started listening to it, and it just all kind of came together. And then Zoom is great, right? It's not like, oh, yeah. yeah. Gives us great opportunities. We never yeah, you would. put an hour aside instead of having to travel or I got to go somewhere and meet you. Or, you know, it's craziness. So I'm also having, um, have you read any Mike Michalowicz's books? Oh, um, sure. Most yeah, so he's coming on in August. He was. He's great. He's up in New Jersey. He's in nearby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so he's Mike's got some up. crazy stuff. But yeah. it's the same thing, though. But because there's stories, people relate to stories. Like it's, I, I look, they're instructional books, and you learn and you read. But if they're not relatable, in terms of a story about a business or a person or a journey that they're on, that's why I always love referral of a lifetime so much. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's a story. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That was a good, about that was a great book. this journey that people are, yeah, that people are on. So I, I think that it's uh, really telling. So um, I noticed when I was listening to your, um, one of your podcasts, that you were actually the most recent one back in December, that you were talking about kind of the thing that I'm always pushing. And that is, 
you know, you have to kind of do things with a purpose. You have to kind of have some plans. You got to have some things written down to reflect back on, to know the road. It's like, if I brought you up here to New Jersey and said, all right, Bob, we're going to go such and such. And then I blindfolded you and then said, here, you take the wheel. You probably wouldn't get very far. So I, I think that's yeah, I very telling. Like that anyway, so that would be even <laughs> No, but isn't it true? I mean, I find that the most frustrating part is that a lot of people start businesses or they end up in businesses or they lose their job and they, you know, whatever. And they just, they get started. They don't write anything down. Yeah, um, I think that is an issue because remember, a lot of people, they start a business because they're good at a certain thing and they think if they are, that that qualifies them to be in business. You know, Michael Gerber talked about that in the E-Myth. Yeah. Book, and Carol Roth uh, in the Entrepreneurial Equation, she talked about that as well. And, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's very important to know that, that just being a good technician you know, being good at right. something. You can make shoes by hand and they're beautiful. Doesn't mean you should be in the shoe business. Exactly. Exactly. It's a different skill set. And uh, you need to, to learn the basics, of course, of, of the business end because you will need to do everything at first. And then little by little, as you learn and you can start to farm out and hire others, then it's a different story. But but yeah, the very, very dangerous to just think that because you're good at a thing that you can translate that into a profitable and sustainable business. You know, every once in a while, I connect with some, um, let's call them coaches, motivational people. You know, they have their following, they got their their people, and they talk about, it's all rah-rah type of stuff. And it's fine. You know, people get involved with their coaches. and they, But a lot of them say to me, oh, they don't need a business plan. They, they need, you know, uh, they need to be a go-getter, which, you know, that's kind of contrary to what you're saying. But you know well, what I mean? And then I, and I, I a second on that. Yeah, go ahead. And, and, and this is something I think that, that I didn't, and I, and I blame myself, make a point of really explaining in the first book, because we said go, go getter um, as though it was like a go taker, which is- Right, is which it's problem. not. We like go getters because go getters are people of action. They get things right, done. Right, of course. The opposite of a go giver is a go taker. Somebody who, but I didn't, but that wasn't explained in the book when Joe was. No, but I understand your point. Absolutely. uh, And and I, I, that's my one regret with the book. I wish we had Gus explain that to Joe when he said that, you know, he said, Joe, you're a real go getter. And and Joe said, Oh, thank you. And Gus said, don't thank me yet. And what we really meant was that, that he was a go getter, which is good, but he was also a go taker. Remember, it was a, about him at first. Right. When you can find being a go-getter, and a person of action, and a go-giver. That's the formula. Bring it, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. Oh, sorry, yeah. I didn't need to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying that um, when I think that people, I don't know what it is, like they just get started and they, they, they lose their way and they try and they don't, you know, take the time to, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, I don't know. I, I, I was, I lost my train of thought, but if, if w- when it comes to, um, You're talking the, about having that plan and, and, um, uh, and, and not just going, uh, you know, you're saying that people will say, no, you don't need a plan. You just need to go out. Right. There. Exactly. And, and, and they're, 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 they're espousing this message, I guess is the best way to say it. Um, it's not hatred. It's not stupidity. But then they'll say to me, oh, they don't really need a business plan. They just need to have the gumption to get out there and do things. And I said, no, they don't. They do need the gumption and the perseverance and all that stuff. But they're not going to remember everything. You can't work off your head, especially as you start to grow the business or whatever. And, you know, and I've been in places where, you know, people are giving speeches who are running $50 million companies and, and, you know, I, I don't always ask the question because they know I'm the lawyer. So I'll say to my friend, you know, hey, listen, ask this question. Tell them uh, what they think. Like, should we have a business plan? Because there are a lot of tech startups, young kids in the group. And the guys, I forget what company he was with. I'd rather not say it anyway. So if I can remember, but he literally said, oh, you don't need a business plan. That's for sissies. Really? And yeah. this was a successful? Very successful. Maybe his company wow. was worth, you know, $100 million. And he had come out of Harvard Business School. So I, I said to him after, I go, you know, I think, I think I, he was, oh, I'm this great guy. So I said to him, uh, I think it's a little irresponsible what you said. He's like, well, what do you mean? What did I say? 
said, you said people shouldn't have a business plan. He goes, yeah, what do they need that for? I go, are you telling me that you built a $50 million company from your head? You were just talking about all these systems, how you had to adjust systems as you went, move people around. That You're not doing that in your head. He goes, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm not doing that in my head. That's a business plan. Yeah, that's too, that's too bad. It's irresponsible. And, and I think you get a lot of these kids who are, especially in the tech startup world, right? They have these app ideas and the things you can program. They're making a website. I don't know, whatever they're doing. And, you know, nine times out of 10 don't make it. We know that. And they can't get funding or whatever. But a lot of them don't use the basic, like you said, principles, right? right? To, yeah. Yeah, to figure out along the way, oh, this isn't working. So it's all I got to do is adjust a little bit. And then adjust a little bit more. Instead, they look back and go, what happened? Yeah. 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 That's, yeah, that's very unfortunate. That's why I came up with the name, The Accidental Entrepreneur. I said, well, everybody's doing this by accident. <laughs> and I'm the one who's fixing all the problems later on. It's usually cleaning up the mess, not fixing the problems. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me more about what you're doing now. So, so I'm going to put links to all your books in the show notes. I talk about them all the time. So everybody should read, listen, whatever they want to do. Watch it, play, you know, read it on Kindle of all four of your books and even endless referrals and all that stuff. But um, tell me about... What are you doing? You, are you coaching people? How are you interacting with people these days? Uh, you know, I'm speaking a lot less. Okay. So it used to be a big part of my business. But as I get older, I'm just, you know, not willing to go on the road. <laughs> That's a choice, right? It, it is a choice. And, okay. and now that, you know, I, I had limited the last few couple of years to no more than 20 out-of-state uh, engagements. But I think after this, with COVID and so forth, I think it's, it's – I've not that I've enjoyed the whole COVID thing and I, my heart breaks for, you know, everyone that's been, right. And you're in Florida thing, too. One of the hotspots. Yeah. But I've enjoyed not traveling. Yeah. And I've got to say, it's sort of got me now thinking, I don't think I'm going to travel anymore after this. Well, I now you can do presentations and speeches without traveling. <laughs> right. Well, that's, that's true. You and, uh, and we're already starting to book those. So, um, so I, you know, I just assume do those for, for less money than what I get for traveling because my sense of enjoyment and being home and not having to get on a plane is, but what we really, Kathy Tejanel, my brilliant business partner and I, we, we do a few things. One is we have a, um, certified, uh, licensing program, certified okay. go-giver speaker program. So we have okay. people from all over the world, though mostly in North America, um, who buy the rights to speak on my various for lack of a better term, intellectual properties. Yeah. Uh, the last 30 years. Right. And teach we, your philosophy, basically, right? Exactly. And we yeah. teach them how to be a paid professional speaker, how to market themselves, and how to actually teach the... And so that's that's one thing. And they can do. go to your website to learn about that program? Yeah, that's just go give her speaker, oh, okay. uh, dot com. We'll put a link but in the show notes. On the, on the website. Okay. Um, and then uh, we just now released... Um, a new program, a new online uh, course, actually, okay. called Endless Referrals, The Go-Giver Way. And it's a nine and a half hour online video course in which I pretty much let it all hang out <laughs> from, from the very beginning, the endless referral system through yeah. the Go-Giver methodology and so forth. So we'll see how that works. We're very excited. You're launching that on your website? Yeah, yeah. We're in fact we're just it, it's it's up there now, but we're we're just starting starting the marketing of it, and uh, we're very excited about. about so you that. said nine hours. So how many modules is that? I'm sure you're not talking for nine hours straight. So no, no. There's a whole bunch of I, I can't or something like you didn't remember. Nine, oh, that many. <laughs> yeah, I mean little. You know, broken. Yeah, up you can it. digest it. Digestible pieces. That's what's great about yeah. the way you wrote your books is it's digestible. Oh, and, and relatable and then it makes people remember things that's the most important part right yeah yeah, yeah. okay so so, yeah, so you're doing that you got any new books that you're working on no no uh that this is this uh course has been over the last year and a half two years that we've put this together so we are uh not uh, well john is actually john and his wife anna are working on another book right now they're actually they're writing um the go-giver marriage and, oh, so there's uh, his yeah. fifth go-giver book. There you go. There, there is, but that's that's John and Anna's. Um, they they asked me to co-author it with them, but although I grew up as the product of a wonderful marriage, I, I've actually been a lifelong bachelor. And I told them I <laughs> feel that, you know, that was credible for me to, 
you know, I'll probably write the forward for them, but, uh, but I, I got a sneak peek of, you know, where the book's going and how he has it outlined and it's going to be great. So right. I'm, I'm yeah. Great. Cause the philosophy really applies to life, not just they have a great sales. Oh so, yeah. And, and so, uh, Oh, absolutely. Sure. In fact, we had Pindar, you know, we had that as a sort of a, a subplot within the original book with Joe and Susan and Pindar kind of giving him some advice. Right. I remember that. Right. Based on my dad's advice. Uh, uh, and we just put that to the, you know, the characters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So there'll be a fifth book then. There will, there actually will be. Yeah. It still has life. I love it. <laughs> um, I see you're putting some things in the chat. So I will, I'll save those before we get offline. Sure. and put those in the show notes. Um, so uh, what other, it, it, since I have you here, if people are listening, which I hope they are, it's a growing podcast, um, what advice do you have? If I'm an entrepreneur, I'm starting a business, maybe I'm struggling right now, what kind of advice do you have for people out there besides read your book, which is the advice I give them? Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, and, you know, the fact is there are a lot of good books to read out there. Yeah. Very helpful. You, we, and, you talked about a lot of them. <laughs> and, and, and find out what those are and, and find out who is doing successfully what you want to be doing and, um, and read their works, you know, yeah. get their books, watch them on, you know, YouTube or wherever they happen to be, follow them. Yeah. There's a lot of great stuff out there. It's true. Yeah. So that, you know, I always think if you want to, excuse me, if you want to accomplish something, First, know, again, as you were saying, and I think you made such a great point, know what it is <laughs> that you want to accomplish. Right. right. Put that down. Make sure you yeah. uh, get your plan together. Uh, and then seek out and find the information. You know, again, someone has done it. Right. And they've documented how to do it. It's they out there somewhere. The process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. Yeah. Uh, apply the action. You know, take action. Apply it immediately. Apply the information immediately. And then be persistent. Understand you're going to get a lot of no's and that's just part of it. And, you know, people who come into a business as an entrepreneur, especially the accidental entrepreneurs, don't realize the amount of no's they're going to hear. Yeah. Uh, they're going to hear a lot of no's. One of the best books I've ever read on that, and this is also a, a, a parable, it's by Andrea Waltz and Richard Fenton. Uh, it's called Go For No. And what they do, and I just put this in the chat for you, right. uh, their website, uh, what they, they do is they reposition the word no. They right. reframe it. So that basically it's, it's yes is the destination, no is how you get there. Right. And the book I believe every salesperson and entrepreneur should read and really study. Again, it's a very quick read. Right. And uh, they did a, a fantastic job with that. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look at it. Yeah. You know, the and thing is, I think, I think if people understand that if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you own a small business, you get started – it's not like you're taking a risk. You might fail. You will fail. You will get no's. It's just a question of what that's going to be. So you better be prepared for it. That's right. Great. Yep. Absolutely. And right. I, you know, and that's and how I, you learn too. Yeah. And it's, I, I think what knocks a lot of people out of business when it, they, they could have had a wonderful business is not that they hear the word no, it's that they think they're the only ones. Right. The word no, because yeah. they see others who were successful doing what they want to be doing and they think, Oh, it was easy for them. Right. No, no way. It's no, never it easy. Right. And I think they, they think the no or the failure or the, the roadblock is a sign that they should stop. Right. And it's not that road. They're reading it no. wrong. No. In most no. cases, it's not always the case. I mean, maybe the case is you should not be in this business. Well, and sometimes that's that sometimes that is true. Uh, it wisdom is knowing the difference, but that's also why it's good to ask others who you trust. Right. That's why you put a plan together and you ask people it. Right. Of course. Cause you come to the conclusion that I shouldn't be doing this. Or like you said, I want to write this book, but I shouldn't be doing this alone. And my yeah. friend is a very good author and a writer and I want him to co-author with me. So you beg and plead and chase him around until he says <laughs> yes. Right. Because, yeah. and then you're successful. I'm working on a book right now with a friend of mine who's a publicist and a writer and I'm not a very good writer. I mean, I'm okay. I write contracts, but it's like pulling teeth out of me. But if he wasn't doing it with me, we wouldn't even be where we are, you know? So it's, it's a legal book about, you know, something like, uh, you know, 10 ways to get sued by all the time by everyone. It's, you know, <laughs> going to teach you how not to make that happen. But right, it's, exactly. yeah, someday I'll write a book about all the accidental entrepreneurs that I met over the years, yeah, I guess. Sounds like a good book. Yeah, well, maybe you'll co-author it with me so we can. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I do appreciate you coming on. Um, I, we're going to 
uh, put some links in the show notes for the book and get it out there. Maybe, maybe if I actually have some listeners coming in, calling in or being involved, they can, we can give out some copies of your book. Um, so I like the first one though. They got to start with the first one. They can't read them backwards. They got to start with the red one and then move forward. So Bob, I appreciate it very much for you coming on. I'm going to stop this.